Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in the Eight Planes and X-Plane 11. For this flight I'm in an Embraer E190 and there's a freeware plane. I think it was originally made for X-Plane 10 as a matter of fact. Uh, pretty good for that, uh, though uh, the stuff up there isn't really clickable or anything. At least it looks decent. Um, hopefully the panel works. Anyway, um, outside uh, we've got Frontier livery uh, and that's looking good. I thought it would be appropriate for our current flight which is from Las Vegas to Salt Lake City I don't know if they have a route like that but hopefully anyway um, so yeah we are going to continue with the Apollo 13 audio and they are continuing on their way back home getting many more procedures down and so there we go and throttle up Aquarius, Houston, over. seems a bit quiet doesn't it Uh, Jim, uh, regarding window five, I guess I'll pump up the sound. I have a drawing here, and uh, when you're you're docked, you have That's a little a, bit better. approximately a 60 okay. degree Off we go. angle between the z-axes of the two spacecraft. Uh, it appears that peering out window five, you would be looking at the rendezvous radar on top of the limb, which would uh, 80 knots. Oh, that's an interesting pitch, voice. Uh, or less give you a, a view of, of the service module that is if you uh, pitched so uh, from and, and I think that this has been run by uh, quite a few folks here so offhand I I can't uh, see that's an interesting wing would be as good or never really liked this sort of wing where it's really a short wing okay, I understand. Uh, unless it's placed uh, further uh, back uh, yeah, not a big fan of this kind of wing configuration, to be honest. Okay, we're mostly going north. You guys sound a lot more rested today. Well, I just went back and sacked out for an hour or so, and then came back up. Very good. And Jim, uh, Houston, uh, we really are going to get those checklists up to you. <laughs> I, th I must have played this portion before. Yeah. We're just going over that a little bit. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Jim, it's time for readings on the battery charging. Yeah, we definitely heard this bit. Voltage and the charger amps, over. Okay, stand by, man. Go ahead, Jim. Well, there's the Las Vegas Strip from uh, somewhat of a distance. Okay, uh, we have uh, no more water in the portable tank. Uh, we tried to get some more out uh, a few minutes ago, and uh, there isn't any. Okay, I understand you ran out of water in the CM portable tank. It's funny, I thought I set the playhead into the right place. Oh well, we definitely don't want to go down though. This is Apollo Control at 125 hours, 24 minutes. We have an update now on the lunar module. Okay, yeah, we, we add all that. Hold on, let me just skip ahead. Uh, Jim, were you, were you uh, able to get those voltage, uh, bad A voltage and oh, yeah, current readings? Okay. And we're ready to read you the first checklist installment. This will, uh, what we're going to read up is going to be a LEM timeline, a CSM timeline, and checklist changes to conform with these. And right now I have the first installment of the CSM timeline ready to read up. Okay, Jack, I'm going to get, uh, or Van, I'm going to get Jack on the line for that, and he'll stand by. Okay, and he'll need a lot of paper. Yep, I remember that line. Okay. 
So there's Lake Mead, of course. Okay, we got it. I don't think we need the strobe light going on right now, but on the power at and a half hours. that going to be clickable in here? Nope. <laughs> nope, it is not clickable. I don't remember the key. I'll just leave it be. Would bring us to an elapsed time on the electrical power of 147 hours, 30 minutes. The water remaining would bring us to an elapsed time of 150. So we're following Interstate 15. That's uh, to our left. Okay, Jack. Uh, wait one. We want to get one into the hands of uh, Flight Ecom, and uh, it'll take about a minute or two. Uh, sorry to wake you up for this, but uh, take about a minute, and then we'll read it up to you. Seven hours worth of lithium hydroxide left. The partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the lunar module now is at uh, three Definitely heard this bit. Per millimeter of mercury. The 146 hours of uh, oxygen left. In the lunar module would bring us to an elapsed time of 271 hours. We're 17 hours and 11 minutes away from entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Jim Lovell uh, reported a short time ago that the potable water tank in the command module has gone dry. There is enough of a pad in uh, lunar module water, though, that uh, the crew will not have to go thirsty. Okay, man. Go ahead. Hey, Jack, do you have any of that CM water, bagged water, left? Over. Uh, negative. I went up and tried to uh, repressurize the surge tank and uh, get another shot of water. I able to repressurize the surge tank okay, but uh, there was no water that came out of the water bin. Yeah, we understand that, that, that there isn't any more in the potable tank, but we understood that you had put some water from that tank into bags, and I wondered if any of the okay, bags Okay, so, looks like basically the limit's at 320 okay. right now. We should probably throw all down. I don't think we need to climb... Okay, Jack, to regular right, altitudes. Jack. It's a fairly short flight. Well, but we okay, still need to level down. out. Okay. Start at uh, EI minus six and a half hours. You're I hope to re that it doesn't seem like the pressurization is a problem, but and I don't know if you want to copy them or I not. just hope uh, it isn't. This is something I can just read off to you. By now, it probably would have caused well, a problem. Without you copying, unless you especially want it. Okay. Okay, LEM pads. Uh, SM jettison. Uh, okay, go ahead. Read which ones we're going to get. Okay, I'll read them fast uh, first here so you get a general idea. LEM pads, service module, jet attitude, moon viewing attitude. Sun viewing attitude and LEM jet attitude. The CM pads are course align angles for LEM attitudes during moon and sun sightings. Course align angles for entry refs map. And CMC angles on entry refs map for LEM jet moon viewing and entry. Now 
Okay, that, that's general pad information. Uh, if you want, I'll read it slowly so you can copy it all down. Otherwise, I'll go ahead. Okay, I'll read the CM pads uh, now, uh, slowly. Course align angles for LEM attitudes. Okay, the next course align angles. So to our left is the Mormon Mountains Four Wilderness Area. To our right, Gold Butte National Monument. And of course, uh, to our rear right is the Lake Mead National okay, Recreation next. Area. CMC angles. On entry refs mat for one. Really, sort of marvelous landscape around here. Very colorful. Lem jet. Two. Moon viewing. Three, entry. Okay, uh, I'll stand by till you read that back. Okay, the CSM pads will be course align angle for limb attitude during moon and sun sighting. Course align angle for entry rest mat. CMC. Uh, CMC angles on entry rest men for one, left genesis, two, moon viewing, three, and three. Okay, that's correct. Okay, Jack, uh, gonna hold up one. Uh, all uh, the hordes of people that devise this procedure. We see a town to our forward right, and that is the they town of Mesquite, so, uh, which is in. right on the border between Nevada and Arizona. And we're basically at the corner of okay, ben, Nevada, right, Arizona, go. and Utah here. Okay, we, we lost you there uh, briefly while you were in the Actually, uh, I think the difference in photo scenery coloration you see right there, uh, Jack, the edge of that is the corner between Utah, this. Arizona, and, uh, and Nevada. Took a lot of people to devise this procedure and uh, oh, we're too a few fast. people have been testing it out, so we'd like to have them all on hand while we give you the rest. Okay. How's the temperature up there, Jack? You guys chopping wood to keep warm? Chopping wood to keep warm. Yeah. Uh, Slayton uh, is the head uh, of their th land their land boss. He's about, their boss. Uh, I don't know, 45 or, or a little bit less than the command module. Uh, it's a nice fall day, huh? Yeah, I tell you, we don't have to worry about chill down. Uh, Van, while we're waiting, uh, do you have there also what I I can expect the uh, ground to uplink me? Uh, we'll 
have that, Jack, but uh, uh, stand by for that. Okay. He always wants to sneak down. Come Jack, on. probably probably the thing to do is uh, to give you all of the checklist, and it will include things like this. And then we'll have a big question and answer session afterwards, if that's okay by you. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, Vance, uh, while we're waiting, just for, for your information, the command module has been stowed uh, for your checklist, with the exception of the two half of lab cameras. Roger, got that, Jack. Deke Slayton talking to Jack Swigert. Keep having to trim up. Uh, really, of your water situation, Jack, uh, we're going to have a pretty good hack on the limb here in the next few hours. And, uh, we uh, anticipate letting you fill your own. Ooh, they've discovered a bad so sound on that mic. There's the town of St. George in front of us. We are in Utah now. Uh, Raj, if you feel like trying the Pliss, that's all excess, and you might want to try that at any time. I'm sure it'll taste like Pliss, but you might as well try it. That's so we have the top priority stuff in the limb. We figure you got a much better chance of getting it through there. Okay. Uh, are you ready? Uh, uh, here it goes again. Uh, Jack, before we start reading the procedure, we'd like. We, we find that uh, Quite a landscape. topped off and in great shape. Like to switch over Pine Valley Mountain Wilderness Area. Two more hours of charging. Is, uh, below us is Red Cliffs National Conservation Area. Here to give you, uh, if you want to copy that, for switching before we start recording the entry procedures. Okay, stand by. Yeah, let me get out my other. Still following interstate. 15, which is to our right, of course. And it's trying to go down again. I've only okay. trimmed up. Uh, at some point, I'm going to hit the end of up trim, and I don't know what to do after that. Okay, but uh, maybe it is because it's an X plane 10 plane. Switch battery charge to off. There might be something up with it. I don't know.
Mean bus tie, bad AC. To bad AC. CB, battery charger. Bad A charge. I don't usually uh, approach Salt Lake City from this direction. Normally it's like Reno to Salt Lake City instead of Las Vegas to Salt Lake City. To open. So I haven't really seen this landscape before and it's quite good. I think CB I'll go with Las Vegas to Salt Lake City more often. <laughs> it's pretty boring, the Reno to Salt Lake City version. CB, bat B, power entry, post landing, to close. Panel five. Main bus tie, bat BC. Off. Panel three. Battery charge to B. Advise. I'll stand by. Jack, advise that we have a back-out procedure for this, but uh, we'll read that up to you later in about two hours. And also that this procedure is a delta to your the first battery charging procedure that we gave you. In other words, uh, it's a delta from where you are right now. We are now approaching Cedar City, Utah. That's the town up ahead. This procedure has been massaged in the last day. Massaging this procedures. Follow 126 hours. Apollo 13 is 89,401 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity is 6,310 feet per second. Swigert's in the process of discontinuing the charge on uh, battery A in the command module. And then they will uh, hook up to bad the command module battery B and we'll charge that for about two hours, top it off. Some low quality patches to uh, the right there. I don't think it quite had stabilized. Hmm. Uh, it was reading 1.1 amp, 39.6 volt when I left up there. OK. 
Okay, we got that. Okay, I guess now's as good a time to start as any. Just a second, Jake. Houston. Okay, Vance, uh, you're kind of weak, but uh, readable. Uh, Jack, uh, we're going to need readings on the bat bolt and uh, charger amps about every 10 or 15 minutes for a while. So is there somebody else that uh, can be reading them out while you're copying them? Uh, yeah, Jim will take a run up there. Fredo is sleeping right now. We're trying to get some uh, sleep here, and Tim will uh, run up uh, and take a look at foliage and current, whatever you call. Okay. Do you put Aquarius? Go ahead, Aquarius. Uh, Vance, uh, we got to realize that we got to establish a, a work rest cycle up here, so uh, we just can't wait around here. We're just reading procedures all the time up to the bird. We've got to get them up here, look at them, and we've got to uh, get the people to sleep. So uh, take that into consideration when you, uh, you get ready to uh, set up uh, that. Yeah, I know, Jim, uh, we're very conscious of that. We. Uh, where he should be ready to go in about five minutes. That's all I can say. Uh, stand by. Okay. Uh, Chris Houston. Okay, Vince. Uh, we're ready to go. Okay, we need a... <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> We need a readout, uh, volts and amps. They've asked for those readouts okay, a lot, so. And uh, might as well bring the comm up to uh, a higher fidelity for this long period of uh, checklist reading. That requires panel 16, CB primary S-band power amp closed. Okay, and next step, panel 12, S-band function to voice, and ranging function to ranging. Okay, Ben, the uh, S-band function is at voice, and the ranging switch was at ranging. Okay, that makes it so we can uh, hear you better, Jack. Okay, procedure's coming back in again. Multi-copies for distribution, and uh, Ken's back. Uh, he's a local expert on this now, so we'll turn you over to him, and he'll read it off. Okay, stand by, I'll give you a vote for them. Ken Mattingly will read the procedures. Please is 39.1, amps 1.75. Okay. Houston, how do you read? Okay, very good, Ken. Okay, uh, let me uh, take it from the top here. Just uh, There might be some overlap, but to make sure we're all on the same signal. We're starting off with a set of uh, timeline procedures that are going to give us, uh, end up with the uh, normal entry checklist. There will be some checklist uh, changes into the book, but the bulk of what I have for you is the timeline stuff. And 
it starts at uh, six hours and 30 minutes prior to EI and assumes that we're getting limb power to main B of the command module. I think you already have the uh, numbers for the limb pads and the command module pads, I mean the types of pads we'll be giving you. And if you have a question on uh, what they'll be doing or, or what they're for, uh, I can go over those now or when we get through. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll make a little note there and uh, we'll discuss it uh, when we get everything copied, huh? All right, and the first item then after you get ready to start this checklist is to install lithium hydroxide canisters and the stow ordeal. On panel eight, we want to turn the floodlights to fixed. Okay, wait a minute, you're going too fast here. Down below us okay, is Beaver, I'll go Utah. One at a time and uh, wait for your verification. Hello, Beaver. I, next one. I have panel eight, floodlights fixed. Okay, install LIOH canister, store deal, floodlight fixed. Okay, that's the panel eight floodlights. Now we're going to take panel five and put the uh, floodlight rheostat to flood and the LEB, that's panel 100 floodlights, are also going to fixed. And the purpose of this is to balance up uh, buses A and B. Okay, uh, panel 5 floodlight, you want the rheostat on. Panel 100 floodlight, you want fixed. That's affirmative. Okay, on panel eight, circuit breakers, EMS, main A, and main B. That's two, open. Okay, panel eight, EMS, main A, and main B, open. Okay, on panel 250. Circuit breaker, battery A, power, entry and post landing, closed. A panel 250, CB, bat A, power, entry and post landing, closed. Okay, the same for circuit breaker, battery B, power, entry and post landing. Battery B, power entry and post landing closed. Okay, and add uh, battery C, power entry and post landing. Battery C, power entry and post landing closed. Okay, that's correct. On panel five. Circuit breaker, bat charge, battery A, charge, closed. Nope, I'm going a little bit too far east. Okay, and uh, the same for circuit breaker for battery charge, bat B charge, closed. size, two of them, on and up. That's probably a verify. Main bus size, AC and BC on, verify. That's correct. Circuit breaker. Battery relay bus. Battery A and B. 
closed. We're basically at the junction between I-15 and I-70. It's uh, okay. Interstate 70 behind us Bay and Bay Interstate 15 Bay somewhere Bay to our Bay. left, but I deviated from it a bit. That's affirmative. Circuit breaker, EPS sensor, signal, main A and main B, closed. Circuit breaker. Instrumentation power control. Three and four. Open. Uh, would you say that one again, Ken? All right. On panel 276. Circuit breakers. Instrumentation power control. Where is Interstate 15? Three and four. Open. And we're not too far away from Salt Lake City now. But it's not uh, on the map yet. Okay, panel two, seven, six, we're at Richfield. Power control three and four open. That's affirmative. Okay, panel five. Circuit breaker. Essential instrumentation power. B. Close. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's not go down too quickly. Okay, I'm sorry, Jack. Would you read that again, please? Okay, I'm Four panel up. five. CB. Central instrumentation power may be closed. Okay, that's correct. Primary evaporate water control valve to auto. Uh, this is on 382. That's affirmative. Uh, okay, Jack, we want to put the primary and the secondary evaporator water control valves to auto. Okay. And Jack, uh, can you give us a readout on uh, Bat B in the charger current? Can't say I've been particularly successful at trimming this out today. Okay, Ken, that was the primary and secondary H2O control valve to auto on 382. That's affirmative. And did you copy about the uh, 
Up, but soon enough, no, let's head down again. Ah, uh, yes, Jim's on his way up. Okay, thank you. All right, the uh, next step after your water control valves is to perform the CSM RCS preheat. We'll do that on page 1-5, steps 35 and 37. Okay, Ken, we're having a problem with the comm. Uh, you read now? Yes, sir, loud and clear. Okay, it's perform CM, CSM, RCS preheat. And could you say again all after? Okay, I'm referring to the entry checklist, page E1-5, steps 35 and 37. Okay, perform CSM RCS preheat for entry checklist page 1-5, steps 3-5 and 3-7. Mm. That's affirmative. Now back to panel 5. Circuit breaker. Caution and warning. Main B, closed. CB, caution and warning, main B, closed. That's firm. On panel two, caution and warning power to one. Okay, we can see Salt Lake City now. Panel two, caution warning power to one. Still that about 80 nautical miles away. One, caution and warning power to one. Okay, on panel five. Circuit breaker, EPS sensor unit, DC, bus A and B closed. Okay, Ken, a comm from you is awful weak, awful weak. I, I can't, it's CB, EPS sensor unit, say again after that. All right, Jack, that's CB. EPS sensor unit, DC, that's Delta Charlie, bus A and B, closed. HCB, EPS sensor unit, DC, bus A and B, closed. And I'll give you the both to them. Okay, that's correct, go ahead. Okay. Both are three niner point one and one point five. Okay, on panel three, main bus A and B. Go to reset and leave it in the center. Okay. I wonder if there's any indication in here of how far I've moved the trim. Okay, now we're at to these more trim. Pitch and, one. Uh, as far as you're concerned, Jack, well, there's still room. Using this for information only. This will be the limb doing an Earth Terminator AGS alignment. And at the time of five plus oh five is the time they'll be going ahead and releasing their ball. And this will be covered in the. Sorry, well, there's some noise outside. Be up linked after this. At EI minus five. We perform yep, a border in this seven. photo scenery. Over. Okay, at EI minus five zero five, 
the Lamb is making an Earth Terminator align and EI minus five zero zero. We perform MCC seven. That's correct. At the completion of mid course seven, the Lamb will maneuver to a separation attitude. And this attitude will be set okay, up on beginning one descent. Of the pads that you're going to get before all the sequence starts. And it'll be flown to the limb ball angles on that pad. Okay, understand. All right, at EI minus four plus 40. We want to perform page one dash six, step three nine of the entry checklist. Uh, Ken, I, I didn't get it. We had a change on these again. Could you say at an EI minus 4-440, four uh, four we do something? Okay. At that time, you want to perform step 3-niner of page E1-6. Over. Okay, perform step 3-9 of entry checklist. Page E1-6. That's correct. Okay, the next is the command module, RCS activation. And that's step 41 of page E1-6. Okay, the next is perform CSM, or CM, RCS activation for step 4-1 uh, of page E-1-6. E That's correct. Jack, the next is at EI minus four plus 30. We want to verify that the LEM is configured for a command module RCS hot fire. Okay, verify LEM configured for RCS hot fire at EI minus 430. That's correct. And we now have clouds. Panel five, circuit breaker, GNN, IMU heater, main B, closed. This is Utah Lake. Oh, that's negative, Jack. That's main B only. South of the Great Salt Lake.
Panel 2, RCS Command on. That's correct. Now, the command module RCS check per step 4 of page E, 2-1. Okay, perform the command module RCS check per step 4, page 2-1. That's correct. Okay, at this point we want to lock the rotation hand controllers. Okay, after that, lock both rotation hand controllers. That's firm. On panel 8. Sequential pyro arm to to arm. Okay, panel eight, second pyro arm, two to arm. Do I get a misfit go for that? Oh, that's negative, Jack. Uh, we haven't uh, powered up any of the downlink at this time. You'll be doing this and uh, the command module RCS pressurization uh, both uh, by yourself. Uh, so to our right is Provo okay. Municipal Airport and okay, forward uh, right Orem, uh, the, the city of Orem and Provo is south of, of that. Module. And uh, these are some limb steps, but so that you'll know what's going on, I'm going to read them to you. The limb will do a limb plus X of one half foot per second then you'll be hitting the CMSM set on and up on their command. As soon as we're free of the service module, the LEM will do another LEM minus X for 0.5 feet per second. This is called the push-pull maneuver. I think it was described this afternoon. Uh, yes, Ken, uh, I, I, was, I heard about it. Okay, I just wanted to uh, know that's the sequence you're in. Okay, at the completion of that, we go back to panel 8, and it's sequential pyro arm, both of them, to safe. Okay, and following this, we take sequential logic to the off. Sorry, Jack. I'll have to ask you to repeat that. Okay, still following Interstate 15 here. Okay, uh, panel 8, sec, logic 2, to off. Are they on now, Ken? I don't remember. I guess it's part of one of the other sequences uh, that we turned them on. Oh, that's a firm, and the reason we're turning the logic off, Jack, is a uh, power savings. So we'll be turning them off, and I'll get them back on uh, when we go to get off of the limb and then uh, turn them back off, and then we'll be turning them on prior to entry, just so you know what's coming. Okay, real fun. Okay, then following uh, this, we'll, uh, the limb will pitch up to acquire the moon, uh, excuse me, they're gonna pitch up and acquire the service module and photograph, and they'll be using the uh, ACA for rotations from now on. And you may see the limb out of uh, window number five at the same time they pitch up to acquire it. Okay, the limb pitches up, acquires the service module and photographs it, and I should expect to find, uh, I possibly see the service module out of window five. That's permanent. Okay, now we're down to uh, EI minus three hours the next time event. 
and the LEM starts a maneuver to what we call the moon view attitude. Uh, this maneuver is designed to place the command module optics pointing with zero zero at the moon. And it'll be flown to on the LEM ball angle. Okay. I think we'll just fly straight in. Okay, the LEM maneuver to the moon viewing attitude. This is, of course, the well, the, the Greater Salt, Salt Lake City uh, area. Command module optics with us at zero, zero. That's affirmative. Okay, now we're going to panel five. And it's circuit breaker, GNN, computer, main B, closed. Okay, panel five, ZB, GNN, computer, main B, closed. That's affirmative. Now, it's a, you're gonna come up with a 37 enter, 06 enter, most likely on the computer. And what we wanna do is to put the computer to standby. If you come up with a 37, 06, you'll have to do a, an enter in order to get the code 62. If it's got 62 on it, you can do a proceed until the disk blanks. Uh, you might remember that the AC is still off at this time, so you won't be getting the standby status light. And your cue that the computer is indeed in standby will be when the disk goes blank. Okay, you're, you're saying that I will probably get a uh, program 06 with a verb 37 inner flashing. Uh, I expect that you're okay, to our left is South Valley Regional uh, Airport, and of course the International Airport's already on the in front of us, do, and I think it's an time to get into the cockpit again. Take you to the code 00062, which is the request for standby, and when you get that, hit proceed until the disky blanks. If you come up with something else, that's where we want to end up in here. With either, a, if you get the code 62 when it comes up, just do a proceed on it. Running gear down. Okay. Uh, just take a peek else at I that. All right. I don't believe so, Jack. Uh, that's one that when you get to that step, if you do get something else, uh, we'll be standing by to see what you say. The whole scheme is okay. to go to standby. Will you be getting it on downlink? No, sir. We uh, don't have that powered up yet. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll yell to Jim, and Jim will give you a call. Oh, okay. Uh, the I can see the Pappy lights, the but I can't see the runway out. orientation exactly. Okay. And we need another battery B readout. Okay, I have to retrim down quite a lot now. Okay, he's on his way. Go ahead. Okay, now we're at EI minus 2 plus 30. We're going to panel 5. Circuit breaker. Essential instrumentation, main A, closed. Okay, CB, central instrumentation, main A, closed. That's correct. Now, circuit breaker, GNN, IMU heater, main A, closed. CB, GNN, IMU heater, main A, closed. That's correct. CB, LEM powers, 1 and 2, open. CB, LEM power, 1 and 2, open. That's correct. CB, GNN, computer, main A, closed. CB, 
3B GNN computer main A closed. Okay, Jack, and uh, that's correct. I got it out of sequence. Would you put that computer main A ahead of LEM power? Yep, that's a little, oh, color reset. Okay, can the CB GNN computer main A closed, goes before CB LEM power 1 and 2 open. That's correct. Uh, Jack, what we're doing is uh, we've had the LEM powering main B and we've had all these uh, particular loads on it and we're getting ready to secure LEM power. So we want to make sure that uh, essential things like the computer and the platform and all have uh, dioded power supplies before we remove the limp power. Okay, sounds good. Uh, both 39.1 amps 1.3. Okay, thank you. All right, now panel 275. Circuit breaker, main B, battery bus B, closed. Okay. Panel 275, CB, main B, bat bus B, closed. That's correct. Circuit breaker, inverter power, one, two, All right, and that looks three. like a nice taxi closed. right there. CB, inverter power, one, two, yep. Come here. and Come three, here. closed. That's correct. On panel five, circuit breaker, battery relay bus, battery A. Okay, B. so welcome to Salt Lake City. Next time I'll be trying out the F-35 and flying it to Dallas. CB, bat relay bus, bat A and B closed. That's correct. Circuit breaker, inverter control, one, two, and three, closed. CB inverter control one, two, and three, close. That's correct. On panel three, AC inverter one, main A. <laughs> Skidding all over the place. Okay, panel three, AC inverter one, the main A. That's correct. Now AC inverter one, AC bus one. On. Okay, well, as I find a parking space, I'll say thanks for watching. Let me pause the, vid the audio. And yep, I will see you next time.